When you are in sport, you do only one thing. We don't have a plan B. The only thing you think about is judo. The moment you start to think about plan B, your results are becoming uh, less good. I'm Yerden Jervi, an Israeli Olympic medalist from Rio 2016, a world champion. I never thought about my second chapter in my life, but the moment I decided to stop in 2017, I just try to live and to see what's coming up to open new opportunities. And I'm more in the TV industry and I'm a lecturer, so I'm a speaker and I'm in the real estate business, so I'm doing a lot of stuff which is really different than sport. It took me a while to decide to retire and to really be sure about it. So after the Olympics, I took a break. I had an operation in my elbow and my eyes. Then I started training every day, and after a while it became a routine, like twice a day. And then I realized suddenly my motivation was not there anymore because I had everything I ever wanted. I wanted to be an Olympic medalist. Of course I wanted the gold, but at the end the bronze gave me such a good feeling. And I was a world champion and my career was so successful. To decide to stop, it was very tough. I spoke about it with Shani, my coach, since I'm six years old. Shani gave me like two weeks to decide. And I told him, I think I'm done. He was very sad <laughs> and it was tough for him. I'm very happy with my decision because I think my chapter in judo was finished. I wanted to discover new things about myself, how I can make other dreams come true for me. I decided to go and uh, to visit Portugal and just from conversation with friends, we start to speak about real estate and to compare prices with Israel. And then I opened my business there. I bought a plot, created a team with architects, engineers, lawyers. I developed this uh, plot for uh, permits for a building and then I sold it. I finished my business there, I sold everything, I came back, and now I'm starting again <laughs> to live in Israel. Actually, I never lived in Israel before, because in Judah I was traveling half a year. I think this is what I learned in Judah, that life is always changing and you need to be honest with what you feel. As a professional athlete, you know, we are always very uh, competitive, and I got this opportunity to go to Survivor. It was a quite difficult experience, <laughs> one lifetime experience. I would say I would never do it again. Uh, it's two months on an island, no food, sleep on the sand. Uh, it's a social game, so we are with 18 other competitors. It was tough. That's the magic part of judo. I brought everything I learned to the game. To be patient, you know, sometimes in a fight when you don't have a solution to the fight, how I'm going to win, nothing works out. But I believe that the solution will come. I got to the final, I didn't win. It was a lot of money to win, but I lost. My biggest win is the crowd, like after my Olympic medal. I get a lot of compliments in the street. For me, it's the biggest win. I don't need to win the show or to earn the money. It's just to be loved by people. A few months after Survivor, I got a chance to be a commentator in the Israeli Ninja Warrior. I can be in sport TV, but not to compete. So I don't have the stress on me, I don't need to train, I don't need to be injured, I don't need to feel the pressure, I don't have to win. So I was in judo career for 22 years and then for almost four years in Portugal, and now I came back to Tel Aviv. One of the things that I miss the most was my family and my friends, because we used to have every Friday a family dinner or something that if I speak about it with friends, for example, if they want to schedule something for Friday, I said, no, Friday is my family day. When you are far away, you understand the miss. And when you are there after, you appreciate it even more. You know, after judo, I can go out more and to enjoy more food, restaurants, parties, but just to have fun and to have a glass of wine with friends. Uh, Yarden was here, and when she was here, she was in judo. Uh, we didn't have much time with her after her career. Portugal. Now she's back to Israel. It's funny, but we meet the same Yarden, just a little bit older, <laughs> but the same uh, uh, beautiful, charming. Nothing changed, so it, it, we're happy. Our family has also expanded. We have now grandchildren, and she told them once in a few months, and now everybody's together. And the sense of family and togetherness is great. There's nothing you want more than that. 
I must be honest that now, five years later, I don't go to the tatami so much. I was actually surprised that I don't have anything like of this thought of, oh, I want to fight. And many people ask me, so do you miss it? And I'm like, no, I'm 100% happy and satisfied. If you would offer me now another medal, I would say I'm good. I don't need more. It's not my word anymore. If in the past, for example, a girl who was 14 years old, she saw how I trained, she saw how hard I trained. Every day she saw me crying, she saw me suffering. She saw me getting to the limit and continue and then winning a medal in the Olympics. I think this is the image they have. So now when I'm going back to the tatami, this 14 years girl is like 20. They see that I'm human. I don't have special power, I cannot fly. I just train hard and believe in myself in this team. So I think that the feeling I get that I gave them the belief that they can do it.